What up, my St. Louis City fam? I'm your girl, Kelly, here to give you the rundown on what happened in St. Louis City government this week. And I'm going to get right into it because, yeah, St. Louis City folks, they was busy this week. So the first highlight, there is redevelopment in the works. So on Tuesday, the Housing, Urban Development, and Zoning Committee of the Board of Aldermen met to discuss like hella pieces of legislation um, regarding redevelopment, but I'm only going to mention like four of them um, just so people are kind of aware. So the first, Board Bill 99, sponsored by Alderman Collins Muhammad, is looking to approve a blighting study for the West Florissant DeSoto East Morning Avenue redevelopment area, which is um, it's a portion of the College Hill neighborhood and is just east of the O'Fallon Park. Uh, of O'Fallon Park. So yes, so that bill was passed um, out of committee with a due pass recommendation to the full board of aldermen. The second piece of legislation, um, Board Bill 105, introduced by Alderwoman Davis, um, is looking to approve a Chapter 99 redevelopment plan and blighting study. This will allow a 10-year tax abatement at 95% for a renovation of the existing Jesuit Hall building and related parking. Um, in the first phase, that'll be about 30 mil $39 million. And through that renovation, is looking to produce some commercial space on the first floor and then 130 apartments. And then the second phase, um, we're looking at a five-year tax abatement at 50% for the proposed new Melbourne apartment building and related parking. And this will cost roughly $56 million dollars. And my understanding is that this Melbourne apartment building will consist of 87 units built on top of the parking situation. Yeah. So the thing that I found very interesting, I, I felt like Soulja Boy with, uh, in that uh, interview with The Breakfast Club when they were saying like Drake is like the hottest rapper or the best rapper or whatever they say. He was like, Drake? Drake? And I felt like that with this piece of legislation because I'm like, Blight? Blight? So, Jesuit Hall, real quick, y'all don't know, this is located on the corner of Lindell and Grand, in the heart of Slewland, Billiken Nation. I don't see no blight around there, unless maybe I'm mistaken on what the definition of blight is with regards to redevelopment projects. So, if anyone out there has the information to enlighten us, please holler at us, 314 Evolve, on all social media platforms, because I really need to have a better understanding of that. However, Alderman Narayan, he felt exactly the same way that I felt, like blight, sis, where? Then on top of that, Alderman Cone, he was like, look, this redeveloper has property in my ward, and this property is falling down. And basically, it's a public nuisance, so we just handing out these incentives for people that can't even maintain their property? Like, where they do that at? So apparently the executive director for a St. Louis Development Corporation and uh, all the Roman Davis said, hey, like we're going to do our due diligence to make sure that this developer is doing what they're supposed to be doing with their currently owned properties. Um, the S St. Louis Development Corporation, um, the new executive director, Neil Richardson, he said that they will be reviewing, you know, photographs of this um uh, redevelopers currently own properties and just you know making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do before I guess this agreement um is signed on where Marlene Davis said she was going to do her due diligence as well to you know keep peeping keep her eyes and ears in the streets uh but yeah and after all of that uh the bill it was passed with a due pass recommendation um to the full board of argument so the next bill Board Bill 111, introduced by Alderman Page, seeks to approve a Chapter 99 redevelopment plan and blighting study for the 1717 Olive Street redevelopment area. The prospective redeveloper plans on renovating the Butler Brothers building into 385 apartments, 385 parking spaces, and 16,000 square feet of commercial space. Because apparently this building is like, it covers over two acres, just over two acres of land. Uh, this board bill will allow for a 15-year tax abatement and something else to mention regarding these apartments. So of the 385 apartments 
96 of them will be reserved as workforce housing units, um, which will uh, basically support folks that are kind of middle income earners. So they make more than um, folks that qualify for low income um, housing opportunities. So what 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 dollar what what amount are we talking here, right? So so with workforce housing units, we're looking at one thousand dollars to twelve hundred bucks a month for a single occupant, and about fourteen hundred a month for a couple. Yes, y'all, workforce housing. Yeah, that's what it goes for. Compared to so the rest of those three hundred eighty-five units that aren't in workforce um, housing is market rate. And this is market rate, y'all. For a one bedroom studio or studio, we're looking at a thousand to sixteen hundred a month, and for a two bedroom situation, sixteen hundred to twenty five hundred a month. Yeah, that bill passed out of committee with a due pass recommendation. And then the last piece of legislation I'm lifting up um, with this regarding development board bill one twelve, sponsored by Alderwoman Gracia, authorizes issuing of bonds. For Delhi Star Corporation, which intends to invest $37 million into a facility at 3049 Shoto, creating 325 jobs at an average wage of about 66000 a year. Um, and, you know, they're looking to authorize 10 years of personal and real tax abatement to the corporation, Delhi Star, as well as sales and use tax exemption on qualified construction materials used. Um, Delhi Star Corporation, now this is interesting, they're also entering into an agreement with the St. Louis Public Schools to provide enhanced opportunities for students and recent graduates. Interesting. This bill passed out of committee with a due pass recommendation to the full board of aldermen. So the next highlight, real quick, yes, the city tow lot investigation continued with the Streets, Traffic, and Refuse Committee on Wednesday. Uh, the purpose of the meeting, Wednesday's meeting, was to discuss the findings of the third audit conducted by the Comptroller's Office, which was a payroll review of employees, and it looked at everything regarding payroll um, for the pay period ending January 31st of 2021. So findings from that uh, review, there were incomplete attendance records, not all time sheets were signed by the supervisor, and a and they also said there was excessive overtime and holiday pay for staff. And they estimated it at like 50 grand, a $50,000 loss due to the errors in overpaying employees for that pay period. Jeez Louise. So the streets commissioner Flake um, and the auditors, the thing that they don't really see eye to eye on is this holiday overtime pay policy. So for those that are scheduled to work, on holidays, um, Commissioner Flake, he sees it as paying staff eight hours and giving them eight hours of overtime. However, the auditors see the policy as it being, um, you know, employees getting eight hours of comp time, eight hours of pay time, and four hours of overtime. So yeah, so there was a discussion there. Um, yeah, so they don't, they don't see eye to eye on that. Also, something that was mentioned was what happens if a department fails to make any changes following an unfavorable audit? Not a damn thing, clearly, because, you know, the auditors, they ain't got no juice, they ain't got no sauce to enforce, you know, anything uh, and make sure folks do what they need to be doing. So that was something that was raised. Um, yeah. And then something else that was raised was that the Board of Aldermen, you know, they don't get sent the reports. So uh, maybe moving forward, this is something that uh, can happen that the auditors can, you know, send that information to um, Board of Aldermen. They're not like told, hey, you can't send this out to folks. Um, but maybe that's something that can be done in the future just so, you know, to nip some of these issues in the bud and make sure that these departments are held accountable with their fiscal practices. So next steps, uh, the Alder people will be, uh, they have homework to go back and read through that holiday overtime pay policy thing because there seems to be a discrepancy there. Um, and also during this morning's Board of Aldermen meeting, there was a resolution passed to hire a court reporter or stenographer to support their committee's investigation into the city tow lot operations. So yes, sure, there's more to come next week. 
And then the last thing I really wanted to highlight this week, the public safety committee meeting, um, they discussed kind of two things. So the first, um, they had a discussion with the personnel department concerning the hiring of a 911 system uh, staff. So apparently um, a lot of people are like throwing dirt on the name of the personnel department saying that they ain't doing their jobs, that they are bringing along these people that ain't qualified to do none of these positions. And basically the personnel department is saying, look, we are doing our job, you know, at the end of the day, we can only do so much, right? So we, we vet the folks with the minimum requirements. We send them to you now, whether they don't work out on your end for whatever reason, um, that's, that's, that's on you, bruh or sis. Um, and also they were pointing the finger at some of these departments saying, you know, that they weren't following up with people, um, in a timely manner and just really questioning some of their processes and, you know, uh, uh, on in whether they followed up with them or followed through with hiring them or saying hey well you sent us all these people but they couldn't pass a background check and and some other things like they're not they don't after an interview saying that they don't think that they um can handle the stress of the job stuff like that so a lot of finger pointing so moving forward um yeah, the personnel department, um, I know Alderman Bosley mentioned this, um, they will have, try to sit down and have these conversations, not only with regards to the 911 system and the hiring of, of the staff there, but just overall throughout the city departments to really uh, figure out some solutions on uh, processes that are more effective and efficient and making sure that people are getting hired, right, in, in a timely manner. So having more productive conversations and saying, you ain't doing your job because that, that ain't going to help nobody or nothing. And then something else the personnel department mentioned was really doing better with not only just recruitment, but just, you know, creating a more uh, appealing uh opportunity for folks to want to work for the city. So that looks like paying people more. That looks like really selling um, the benefits that city employees have um, and, and selling the pension and, you know, doing some other things as well. So, yeah, and also lastly, with regards specifically to the 911 system hiring, you know, there are still these discussions regarding consolidation of the emergency system. So instead of it being... Um, you know, you have the dispatchers for uh, fire, you have the dispatcher for uh, police, you have the EMS dispatcher kind of bringing those all together. So those talks are still being had to really make sure that um, hiring for the 911 system improves. And then the second thing the Public Safety Committee discussed. So Adolphus Pruitt, who um, is with the NAACP, the city of St. Louis, he came to the committee with this alleged policy saying, alleged policy in place that says if you're involved in an interaction with the police and you end up getting arrested, uh, you know, and you get charged with resisting arrest, even if you didn't resist arrest, uh, once you get sent to the courts, um, the only way you can get your, your charges dropped is if you sign a waiver saying, I won't sue the police department. So, yeah, the committee, they mentioned kind of next steps with that was to just to get a little bit more information about it. And then once they're able to kind of flesh some of the details of that out, you know, then they'll determine what next state steps that they'll take with regards to that. Because if this is legit and, and something that is happening, clearly it has to be um, addressed because that's not good. Oh, I'm almost finished, y'all. Legislative corner, legislative corner. Yes. So, you know, there were only um, three bills passed this week by uh, the full board of aldermen, and these bills closed, will close streets in the first ward, so yes, in the heart of the north side. So the first bill will close Theodosia at Union, the second bill, it closes uh, Pauly in place at Union, and the third bill closes Cope Brilliant at Union. So that's all I have for you all this week. Please uh, have a great weekend, and you'll see me soon. Peace.